Hi everybody, my name is Henry Herbert. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The topic of today's video is going to be which piano should I get? I have an email here from a subscriber. Actually, I have two emails. I have a couple of emails. Um, and uh, they focus on this issue and they raise some good points. There's a couple of interesting uh, emails. Dear Henry, this is the first email. Dear Henry, does playing analog pianos and digital pianos tend to affect things? I'm not talking about the sound, but the feel of the instrument. I do my homework on an, and this is the word he uses, El Cheapo, beginner's digital piano. I think he means a, a cheap piano, not expensive. And I think I'm playing it well, but when I go to my teacher's upright, I get all twisted up, if you know what I mean. This frustrates me, as I think I have something nailed, but I come unglued during the lesson. Well, this is what I would say to that is, I think when he says analog, he means acoustic. I think he means an upright piano, because an analog piano, that's a whole different thing. Analog piano is like the early electric pianos, like Wurlitzer pianos, and um, they are great, but I don't think that's what he's talking about here. So I'll just go over what he said again. I do my homework on a cheap beginner's digital piano. Well, what does this tell you? You have just answered your own question when you say a cheap piano. I find with digital pianos, you, like most things in life, you pay for what you get. As my grandmother used to say back home in England, if you buy cheap, you pay dear. Long ago, I learned the hard way that if you buy a cheap keyboard, and it breaks, which they do break, everything breaks eventually, and the cheap ones break before the expensive ones do. You'll have to buy a new one because uh, either the broken parts are beyond repair since they're of such low quality, or the cost of repairing the piano is greater than the cost of buying a new piano. So your fingers and hands also become accustomed to the feel of the keys on this piano. Um, and normally it's badly weighted, sticky action. As well, the sound's probably not very good. Uh, and then you get to your teacher's piano, which if they're a professional teacher, um, it's like night and day because they'll probably have a, a good quality acoustic piano. So you can't use the same muscle memory and finger pressure that you've learned on the cheap keyboard as you can on your teacher's piano. It's all about how much you want it, uh, in my experience, issues like this. Because I remember when I, I bought my first digital piano when I was living in London, it was a Yamaha piano and it cost me about £2,000, I think. I saved up for it uh, by working multiple jobs. I was working as a, a teacher assistant in a school. I was uh, teaching French lessons. I was teaching piano lessons. I was washing dishes. Um, and I was playing gigs at night as well, uh, all to save up to get this piano. And eventually I saved up all the cash and I went to buy it in the Yamaha, um, the Yamaha, uh, shop in London and I was so excited to have it. I, I carried it on the tube in a keyboard gig bag. It was incredibly heavy, but I just wanted to get it and have it at home. I was that excited about it. I didn't want them to mail it to me. I was like, this is mine now. I'm going to play <laughs> as soon as possible. But I really, really wanted it. And I knew that I had to get the best piano I could afford, which at the time was that one. Um, if, if you have a low quality keyboard, you will, um, you will learn incorrect techniques if you play on it too much. So I suggest, um, I suggest, uh, look at the prices. Anything under about $400 is probably not going to be very good. Um, then from $500 to seven or $800 is, is good, starting to get into good quality. But then the really good ones, are going to be over a thousand dollars. That goes for digital pianos, sometimes two or three thousand dollars. All depends how much you want to have a good quality instrument to practice on. Um, you can also look for used upright pianos. Uh, you can get them for free on Craigslist sometimes or for very cheap, but moving a, a piano is expensive. 
But le this is this is another issue where it all depends on how much you want to have a, a good instrument. Pianos are big and loud, or acoustic pianos, so you will need a place where you can play it without annoying people or or uh, neighbours. I used to live in an apartment in London. With uh, I always used to annoy the neighbours upstairs when I was practicing, and it it was very difficult to find the time during the day when I could practice. Some pianos have a, a silent system where you can um, play with headphones, so I, I look into that. Let's move on to the next email. Good afternoon, sir. I was wondering if you would be so kind as to make me a recommendation on my first piano that I'm looking at purchasing. I've looked at numerous brands and models, but I honestly have no idea where to start. I would say, like I said to the, the previous person, get the best piano you can afford. And I would say acoustic piano is better. Don't go cheap. There is a, an exception to this where some people may have um, a great piano and they want to give it away because they, they don't play it. It's been in their house for ages. Maybe it belonged to their grandma who passed away or something. Uh, they don't want to deal with it. So they just want to give it away. Um, this is worth looking into and you will be taking a risk because pianos are expensive to move and you may end up with a bad piano for free, which will cost you more money. So get it appraised by a professional if you're in that situation. Of course, if you do this and the owners are told the piano's true worth, they will most probably ask you for more money to take it off their hands. So bear that in mind. Um, best thing you can do is, is just go to a piano shop and get the advice of the people working in the shop, tell them what your budget is, and they will be able to point you in the right direction. He goes on to say, I really like something, I, I would really like something I can use with my iPad as a learning aid, as well as with headphones. Well, that, that, that is, um, I, I can advise you with that, because I'm, I'm fortunate to be endorsed by Roland Pianos, which make the beautiful keyboards that I use on tour, and uh, I, I have two here in my home in Austin. Uh, they make some great products that would interest you. Uh, if you go to their website, www.roland.com, it's in the video description. They have several keyboards that work with iPads and apps to download that you can use with the iPad and the keyboard together that help with your learning. iPads, they're the perfect size and shape to put on the sheet music rack as you play. You can play your instructional videos on them and Roland stuff is top quality. You cannot go wrong with it. Uh, I've played them, been playing Roland pianos um, live for over 10 years now, and I always can rely on them. Uh, if you get a digital piano from Roland, make sure it has weighted keys. There are some that do not have weighted keys. Um, as well, when you go to purchase a good quality digital piano, often the store, the store will throw in a keyboard stand and a stool at a discounted price if you buy them all together from the same store. So that's worth looking into. Uh, so I hope I've been able to answer the questions uh, to those two people who emailed in. And if anyone else has any questions about that, please email me. Check the video description for a summary of what I said there. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.